All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to Sender Unknown. And we last left Morgan. She's using the flares to scare off the wolves. Yeah, we don't know if she got eaten. Okay, so that, that was Harry, but it worked. I'm still alive. And the wolves are gone. Great. So she scared them off with the flares that we were able to find in the the RV van, whatever it is that they, she's traveling around in. That's awesome. Let's so let's check out our current stats. So we're we're pretty balanced for the most part. We've we've got more trust and logic. We've got a uh, 30% of each trust and logic, 20% intelligence, 15% willpower, 10% empathy. And I'm I'm sure these stats are going to play a factor later on, you know, when we're trying to convince somebody or when we're trying not to be fooled. So the wolves are okay, though. I don't care about the wolves. <laughs> that might sound me. I don't. I don't care about the wolves. So that's that's awesome. It's all we we just got a little bit more trust there. So now our trust is starting to take over. You should have seen it. I held a flare in each hand like a superhero. Just call me the human flare. <laughs> the wolves made yippy noises and took off. With the tails between their legs, it was lit. <laughs> Literally, it was lit. Not that I enjoyed frightening animals, but given the choice between being eaten and that, you know where I stand. <laughs> Thanks for your help, tongue-tied. My pleasure, Morgan. I think her name is Morgan. I'm pretty sure it's Morgan. When an icon appears inside a message bubble, that stat is being tested. Ooh. So that right there is testing my trust. I'd feel so alone out here if it weren't for you. I, I, now, let me just make sure that her name is Morgan. I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top, make sure that I am talking to a Morgan before I keep saying Morgan and, and it's not Morgan. Okay, it's definitely Morgan. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. All right, so I feel so alone out here if it weren't for you. I'm here for you. I'd do anything. All right, do it for anyone. Great, but I've got to go. <laughs> yeah, that'll that'll give her give her some good trust. So our our trust is at forty percent. Is it high enough for us to say I'm here for you? Let's try that. Oh, so we got a little bit of empathy there. Thank you, tongue tied. Because I'm not out of the woods yet, as much as like I'd like to be. The wolves and the radio madman, as it turns out. They were just problem number one. So what's going on? That was a little bit more willpower there. It's hard to know where to begin. I still don't know where my friends are or where I am. And did I mention the RV won't start? Yeah, we knew that they, we knew the RV won't start because that's definitely the case. Where I drive to get help, I really wanted the RV to start tongue tied. I'd, I'd like to get you out of there. That was a little bit more empathy there for us. It gets worse. A lot worse. I'm diabetic and almost out of insulin. That's not good at all. Okay, don't worry. Don't worry. And more empathy. We're getting, we're getting quite a bit of empathy there. We're starting to build up the empathy. What is empathy again? Do you feel all the feelings or are you kind of a douche? <laughs> we're feeling the feelings. We're doing... <laughs> We're definitely not a douche. <laughs> Thanks, your confidence is aspiring. If overall optimistic, normally I'd manage the insulin stuff fine, but here's the thing. Hit me with it. I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to be freaked. So hit me with it. <laughs> I can take it. Someone attacked us, me and my three friends. They're gone, right? And so is all of our stuff from the cabin. Oh, and her insulin was probably in her bags including my extra supply of insulin. So after surviving this wolf attack, I might fall into a coma and die anyways. That's not good. <laughs> Don't even know what to do next. First aid kit in the RV. Have you tried texting to 911? I'll call 911 for you. But we don't know where she's at, so it's not going to help. So let's check the RV. Like, did you first, did you find the first aid kit in the RV? Insulin isn't usually included in the first aid kit, but that's okay. It would still be a good thing to have. I didn't see one earlier when we were playing search for the flare, but I'll check. Give me a minute. 
All right, so she's she's currently looking for her first aid kit. But see, like I that was the only thing I could think of picking because like she said her phone isn't working correctly. I mean, she's texting us, but that's she can't call, right? I don't I I, I feel like I remember her not being able to call. And if we call 911, what are we going to tell them? We don't know where she's at. We don't know what's I mean, we kind of know what's going on, but right now we don't know how to get to her. We don't know where to tell the you know, emergency personnel to, to go. There's nothing we know. So there's, there wouldn't have been any reason for us to call 911 either. So the best option, in my opinion, was check for the first aid. So now we're going to go ahead and speed up time here a little bit so that way we can get right back into the story. All right. I didn't find what I was looking for, but I found something all right. It's a gun. Oh, like a flare gun? Like, why would there... That would be the only type of gun that I would know would be in a first aid kit as a flare gun, but that's more of like an emergency kit. What type of gun? What type of gun are you, did you find? It's a bit disturbing that my friend Jan had one in here. He's never said anything to me about owning a gun. It's a handgun, I think. My only experience with guns is through movies and TV. I've never even held one before but it doesn't look like it's loaded. In the same box is the other thing that looks like it attaches to the gun. Talking about the magazine, maybe. It's full of bullets. If I've learned anything from cop shows, it's called a magazine. <laughs> Do you know anything about guns? Uh, I, uh, yeah, I know, I know a lot about guns. I know quite a bit. Let's see if I can help you in some way. Send me a pic, and I can help. Just a sec. Okay, let's open this picture. Okay, looks like a, a, a nine millimeter. <laughs> yeah, just a you know nine millimeter gun. Bullets don't look big enough to be a forty-five ACP, so definitely, definitely, probably a nine millimeter. What should I do? Take the bullets out of the magazine, slide the magazine into the handle, slide the magazine into the top chamber. So that, that, you don't slide it into the handle. You're going to slide it into the handle, not in the top of the magazine, not in the top chamber. It clicked into place. Thanks, tongue tied. I hope I don't have to use it, but I do feel safer now. Okay, I guess it's time to figure out what to do next. I can't hide out in this RV forever. Now, she also needs to slide the, the, uh, she needs to pull the slide back so that way she can chamber a bullet because it's not going to do any good without chambering a bullet. You're not going to be able to, 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 to use it for what you want, you know, for self-defense or anything. So where's the cabin? Can you send a selfie? What happened to your friends? I wonder, I mean, so it's testing our trust again. I wonder what will happen if we ask her to send a selfie. Can you send a selfie? I'd really like to see what you look like. I'm flattered, really. But right now, I just want to figure out what to do next. Well, if you send a selfie, then, then that would also include your surroundings. I might be able to help better. <laughs> Maybe it would help if I started, with, started at the beginning. This all began when Jan heard a noise outside. Actually, I heard it too. What kind of noise? Hard to describe a noise like that, but now that I've met the friendly neighborhood wolf troop, I'd say it could have been them. If wolves, if wolves could talk anyway. Sounds like that thriller video. <laughs> a little bit of Michael Jackson there. Cool. I mean, if it's if it's if it weren't so scary, talking wolves, that's crazy. Yeah, talking wolves is crazy. The noise was halfway between human and animal. So Jan went to investigate, and someone hit me on the head, I think. I blacked out. Are you injured? How's your head? Ouch. Or, how's your head? We're getting a lot of empathy here. At least we're... <laughs> Empathy's starting to really jump up. Just a nasty bump. When I came to, my friends were gone, and so was all of our stuff. Including my phone, I went out 
to the RV to see if I could drive to get help, and the wolves chased me. I found this crap phone in the back of the RV. I'm surprised it has had been charged. I'm nostalgic for old flip phone. It's a good thing you found that phone. I'm surprised that your friend's still had it. It's a good thing you found the phone. What was that? That was logic. I know, right? I just realized I don't have a charger for it. Yeah, it's probably going to die. And it's getting dark. I'm exhausted. My friend and my insulin supply are gone. My RV won't start. And there are ravenous wolves roaming the woods out there. Yeah, you're definitely in a predicament. Not exactly the vacay my friends and I had envisioned. What do you think I should do? Get some sleep, look for a charger, hotwire the RV. Hmm. I th I mean, we definitely need to find a charger for the phone. Okay, you can't let the phone go dead. You got, I mean, eventually you're going to have to find the charger. Hotwiring the RV means going outside. I think we need to find the charger. Let's look for the charger. Maybe there's one in the cabin somewhere. Now that the flares have died down, it's really dark out. I'll find a flashlight and then head back to the cabin. Talk to you when I get there. All right, so now she's heading back to the cabin to get a flashlight. She's going to look for a, a charger. We are going to fast forward in time so we can see what happens next. I made it to the cabin, and I realized I had taken an insulin dose out to use right before the weird noises started. The psycho missed it when he stole all of our stuff. So I've at least got that. I can ration it. Oh, good. So she did find some insulin. That's awesome. That's really good. They're really good. That's one thing less to worry about. How long will it last? That's relief. I was worried. That's, that's, that's one less thing to worry about. For now, anyway. It won't last forever. It's only one dose. I've never had to make insulin last, so this will be one big experiment. Having to think like a character in a horror movie really tires you out. I need to rest a bit until my blood sugar normalizes. The sun might be up by then. Judging by how long it's been dark out, I hate to serve... I hate to sever our connection. Oh, we got an achievement. Complete the first chapter. I hate to sever our connection, tongue tied, but I'm going to power the phone down for now. Who knows how long this battery will last. Good night, tongue tied. Sleep well. Good night, Morgan. Good night, Morgan. Sender unknown is offline. And that completed chapter one, it looks like. There you guys go. That completed chapter one. Morgan is some, for now, for now, Morgan is, it's for now safe in the cabin. Take, you know, ha having a little shut eye, getting some rest. Trying to normalize her blood sugar. That way she doesn't go into a, a sugar coma or anything and, and, and die. That would be terrible. She did find a dose of insulin in case for emergencies. She says she's going to hope she try to make it last. Hope you guys are enjoying Sender Unknown. If you are, hit that like button. Leave me a comment down below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Be a part of this amazing tongue-tied community. As always, thanks for watching. Love you all. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.